the arithmetic mean or average of two numbers x and y is x plus y divided by 2. In an arithmetic sequence, the middle term of any three consecutive terms is the arithmetic mean of the other two terms. If you take a moment to think about this, that makes some really good sense. Let's see an example. Problem three, using the arithmetic mean. What is the missing term of the arithmetic sequence dot 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 15 blank 59 dot dot dot? Well, according to what we saw above, that middle term is just going to be the arithmetic mean or the average of 15 and 59 the two terms immediately before and after it. So let's consider a very simple arithmetic sequence. Let's say uh, 10, 12, blank, 16. Well, we know already the value to fill in the blank, 10, 12, 14. But because we're adding to our common difference and adding to again, Notice that 14 is right in the middle of 12 and 16. That's also one way to look at the average of two numbers. The number right in the middle is the average. So uh, 12 plus 16 divided by 2 because we're adding two values. 28 divided by 2 is 14. So there's an example to show you this working. Uh, so let's get back to the problem at hand. 15 plus 59 is 60, 70, 4, 74 divided by 2, 37. And your chance to show that you have got it. Part A. The 9th and 11th terms of an arithmetic sequence are 132 and 98. What is the 10th term? And part B, a reasoning question. If you know the 5th and 6th terms of an arithmetic sequence, how can you find term 7? using the arithmetic mean. Example problem four, using an explicit formula for an arithmetic sequence. So consider this sports arena. The number of seats in the first 13 rows in a section of an arena form an arithmetic sequence. Rows one and two are shown in the diagram. How many seats are in row 13? Well, note row one has 14 seats. Row 2 has 16 seats, and we're told this is an arithmetic sequence. Given that information, we can tell that our common difference is 2. So 2 would be the value we would continually add to find the next terms or the next number of seats in each row. Perhaps thinking of the sequence generated would be helpful. Now, recall from an earlier example problem, the way to find the nth term, in this case the 13th term, is to multiply our common difference, for us that's 2, by n minus 1, and add that to our initial value. So, to restate that, our common difference is 2. Our initial value a, or a sub 1, is 14. Therefore, our 13th term, as we've learned previously, will be our first term plus n, which for us n is going to be 13, n minus 1, so 12 times our common difference, 2. 12 times 2, 24, 14 plus 24, 38, thus telling us that row 13 will have 38 seats. You may take a look at the books, uh, step 1 and step 2, in order to see a more strictly algebraic approach to do the same work that I just completed. Please make sure you understand the algebra involved in steps 1 and 2, but also make sure you understand the logic um, and the intuition of the approach I took. And a chance to show that you have got it. The numbers of seats in the first 16 rows in a curved section of an arena 
form an arithmetic sequence. If there are 20 seats in row 1 and 23 seats in row 2, how many seats are in row 16? Work carefully and make your selection from the choices below. And your lesson check for this section, all on one page.